Hello, this is Ben, one of the designers of Hyphane Peaks for Five Torches Deep. Going to do a quick flip through of the book today so you get a sense of what's inside. Beautiful cover artwork by Jake Ciano, and just kind of showing a landscape shot of the destination. Hyphane Peaks is a setting book, but it's really more of a setting toolkit. It's what we sometimes hear called a non-canon setting, so there's no real defined areas or maps or anything of that nature. It's all sort of a, a list of tools to help you build your own version of the game. So this intro part, just a bit around the kind of summary for the GM and the group to know all the art in the book. It's by Jake Ciano again. Um, so just kind of quick hit details here. There is a series of advanced classes, which is a new mechanical concept from Five Torches Deep. Um, basically, it's similar to like a third edition prestige class, but the idea is that once you hit a certain high enough level, like level three, you can change your class to one of these more advanced classes that are uh, relevant to high pain peaks. And so, for example, the Cliff Crab, the Goat Knight are some of those advanced classes. So you see uh, the typical class qualities and then some of the special abilities that they get through um, leveling. A couple more. And then we wanted to make sure that if you were playing Five Torches Deep in Hyphane, you could actually have a version of that class that's more related to the setting. It's more appropriate and relevant to that setting. So we made an, an altered version of each of the classes from the core book. So the Warrior, Thief, Zealot, and Mage. And they just have a slightly different mechanical characteristic um, to make them more fitting for the setting. We also introduced three new lineages. Um, some games call that race. The lineages are basically a crab person, a root person, and a clay construct. So you can see the three of them here. Um, here's one of the crab people. They get some special abilities as well. So this is a little bit more crunchy than what you see in uh, the core book. If you remember from Five Torches Deep Core, it's just a single line of text for each race. And so this is a lot more comprehensive, similar to Five Torches Deep Origins, if you use that. We have some mountaineering gear, some specific magic, and we have unique spell mishaps. And a lot of people have asked for different spell mishaps, depending upon the type of setting, the type of casting, the type of magic that's being done. So we have a unique mishap table for each of the two spell types. Ordomancy is an arcane spell type, and Stone Soul is a divine spell type. We have a typical full page spread of spell list, just like in core. Ordinancy on the left, stone soul on the right. So you can see all the different spells that you can unlock within that spell list. Some unique magic items. And then this whole section is around the landscape and kind of the, the geographic features. We felt like for a mountaineering book, we really had to have a certain amount of detail paid to mountains and what makes Hyphen Peaks unique. So there's a lot of information here around how to make mountains more believable and, and mechanically relevant to your game. Um, some of these are unique setting locations. So like the Oprah Peaks and the Bridgeways are specific regions within Hyphane that you can kind of move around or plop wherever you want with uh, a brief description, some hooks that you can run on a random table, and then just a bit of art for each of these. And again, these aren't meant to be comprehensive. They're just really kind of starting points um, some games call them impressions, so it's a kind of an impressionistic setting. So then this section is about mountains and the different types of mountains that you find in Hyphane. Some of them are natural, some of them are shaped. One of the core concepts of this setting is that there was a long dead civilization called the Shapers that kind of built a lot of these strange structures up in the mountains, and so some of the mountain types are uh, touched by magic. Here's a randomization system, so you can kind of build your own quick mountain range. We also use our popular color puzzle cube technique to determine uh, what a small region looks like. It's similar to Five Torches Core, but made unique for Hyphen. Then we have pretty comprehensive and specific rules for mountaineering. So you can see travel, weather, getting lost, specific mountain hazards, so on and so forth. Then we have a very comprehensive 
climbing, uh, falling, and kind of just staying alive in the mountain section. So a lot of detail on how a climbing check works. If you want to make a whole session or a whole adventure out of that, what happens when you fall, there's an injury table here. And then because Five Torches Deep uses resilience, which goes down over time, we wanted to make sure we had a way that you could uh, recoup that resilience while you're up in the mountains. Different types of climbs that are increasingly difficult from left to right. We have a pretty cool uh, macro travel mode called a peak crawl, similar to like a hex crawl or uh, a point crawl, but specific to mountains where you're looking at it from a topographical map standpoint and how to get up to the top. Some information around the shapers and the ruins, kind of quick combination of these different tables gives you a, an idea of a, what the ruins would look like. And these can be basically just a fill in the blank for any sort of dungeon in another module or another game. Some common things that are found up in the mountains and about the shapers. This is an illustration of a typical shaper ruin. You can see it has a lot of weird, obviously non-man-made elements to it. And then a, a brief section about specific monsters. So this is an Aurora worm, which is one of the kind of central foes of the setting, but then some more specifics with specific foes that you would want to fight. Some more there, random encounters as well. And then a bit on the people. We think it's really important for a setting book to have information around daily life and what the people do and what they eat, how they survive. We're really big in the kind of verisimilitude of making a land feel lived in. So we have a lot of information here around just what the common folk are doing in this area while the party kind of adventures around. Bunch on settlements, and what those look like. Obviously they have unique uh, requirements to survive in a really harsh mountainous environment like this. And then some specific more social things like various cultural elements, taboos, common thoughts, superstitions. And then the whole back of the book is a bunch of random tables. So we have here 1D100, just random details. So for example, 46 is dappled patterns of gossamer wings. You could apply that to how particular magic looks, how an item looks, how the halls of a shaper ruin look, whatever. Just there for inspiration for the GM. And there's a whole bunch of tables. These are adventure seeds. These are random NPCs that are all named random ruins that you can use for inspiration, random loot. Here's some illustrations of what that loot would look like. Over here, we're particularly proud of these ones, the Thought Stones. They're kind of just like creepy, magical items that you can ingest or wear. Some of them cause really significant injuries, um, but some of them have really big benefits too. And then just some specific shaper artifacts. So these are just kind of weird, magical, large relics that exist out in the wilderness. And then this is a starting location. So just on a spread, the idea behind this is that the GM could just print this out as is and have a quick visual description, some common things to keep out for, and then some specific hooks and random events. So the party can use this location as a kind of a home base as they range up and down the peaks. And then finally, a bit around converting other material into hyphen. That's it. We really like how the book came out. We're super proud of it. And we hope you enjoy it as well. Thanks.